Good morning. I think a lot of us can relate when we talk about the value of time. My presentation this morning is going to relate in a very personal way to each one of you, um, as I think we all can remember where we were 5,674 days ago. September 11, 2001. My story is, as a survivor of 9-11 is, is one that's still hard to say uh, after all these years. It's one of those life moments that we think about, where were you when that happened? And so today when I talk about the value of time, we can even begin with a, where the word value came from, the Latin origin of be worth. Be worth. You see, in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to have your attention on September 11th. But for the next 20 minutes, unfortunately, there's a terrorist somewhere that's going to be creating another terrorist attack like what had just happened in London. Or we could talk about the Orlando or the Boston Marathon or Sandy Hook Elementary. They just keep going on and on. And I need your help. Because in the next 20 minutes, you're going to see what happened to a survivor of 9-11. But we can't change the course of the world without each one of us being involved. And so as we think about, and I'm going to show you a video, when we think about be worth, I want you to think about how you can be a worth to others, how we can think differently, how we, we treat each other differently how there's a very, very clear line between whether we're appreciating life or do we feel entitled to it. So folks, you don't have to live through a terrorist attack to learn from one. That's why I'm here today. There's a lot of 9-11s that happen in, in our lives to, to varying degrees, but it's what we do with it. It's how we respond to it that truly leads us to where we're going to leave a legacy. What is the tomorrow going to look like that we're going to leave? It's how we respond to these things that happen. Now, a lot of what you saw there may have generated a lot of feelings, anger, frustration. It happens. It, it, I still live with it every day. But how I respond to that is much different. And I, that's why I think we all need to do. Because in life... We're going to have those 9-11s that happen, obviously to a much lesser degree, but we're going to have that opportunity to appreciate where we are, or are we going to be entitled to how we, we're going to react? You see, if we're entitled to be angry and entitled to take things into our own hands, we become the enemy that they are. If we instead appreciate all that we have and the gifts that we have in life, we can truly honor that September 11th for those that were lost that day, but also appreciate that a better tomorrow will only come when we change the way of how we do things every day. You know, whether it be sometimes where we're, when we're driving and somebody cuts us off, boy, don't we get the opportunity to feel entitled to give them some words of encouragement? Perhaps um, it's really easy to do so. But when you appreciate that that person may be rush, rushing to the hospital because they have a sick child there, that's when we decide to take it to another level. That's when we decide to be different. So in, this, in these moments this morning that I have with you, I'm going to encourage each of you to think really hard. Think about the moments that you can no longer feel entitled to what you have and instead to learn how to appreciate them. So September 11th was a pretty awesome day for me that morning. Beautiful day. Skies were blue. Went to work. Uh, I had a dream job at the United States Pentagon. And for somebody that's from the New England area originally, when you go and tell your buddies back home that, yeah, you work at the Pentagon, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. But when you're down there in D.C. area, you say, yeah, I work at the Pentagon. They're like, big whoop, I work at the White House. So it's not so much the effect but boy, what a special, special spot to be able to contribute to your country. And so I was installing data networks uh, in the newly renovated section. And that morning, uh, Bobby Shelby, who you met in the video, and I, we got together and we mapped out our day where we're going to be going. And so around 8.30 in the morning, 
uh, I had a conference call and that delayed me. You see, sometimes being late for the right reasons is okay. And so that delayed me. And so then this woman that I spoke with called me back not too long after that. And she said, Dan, did you hear about New York? And I said, no, what happened? And she said, uh, there's a plane that flew into the Trade Center. And I'm like, in New York? What a horrible accident. Do you remember when you first heard that? And then she, as we talked, she said, Dan, you're not going to believe this. I'm like, oh, what's next? I mean, and she says, a second plane went into the other Trade Centers. I'm like, wait a minute, one's an accident, two? We're at war. Ah, oh, nuts. I'm in the defense capital of the world right now. Probably not the spot that I really should be. And so I did what probably a lot of you did. I hung up with her and I called home. And I talked to my dad and I said, Dad, I just want to let you know that it looks like our nation's at war. And he was like, what? Really? What are you talking about? Tuesday morning, you're calling me? This is pretty odd, Dan. No, Dad, serious. I'm not kidding. Look online. Don't worry, Dad. I'm in the Pentagon. It's a fortress. It made it through the Cold War. I'll be fine. As I'm trying to convince my dad, I'm trying to convince myself. Have you ever been in that situation where you're trying to convince others of a, something you believe in and you're, you end up trying to help yourself as you're doing it? And so I, I hung up with my dad and that was the, nearly the last time I spoke to my dad. It was up on the fifth floor of the Pentagon where cell phones worked because the walls were so thick. And Bobby and I reconnected and we headed down to the first floor. And as, as we were going down to the first floor, um, Bobby asked me if I could take a smoke break. Uh, I don't smoke, but and he does. So I said, sure. In between the B and the C ring, there's an open area where vehicles drive in because the building is quite large to make deliveries. And so at that point, uh, Bobby start, lit up his cigarette, and I had a clipboard in my hand at that time, and that's how I started my book, how a clipboard and a cigarette saved my life. You see, as Bobby lit up, I flipped open also my cell phone browser, and I started reading about New York. And I was like, geez, Bobby, what's next? The Pentagon? Three, two, one, boom. The blast went off. It picked Bobby and I up and threw us a good distance. And then we were knocked out. The building came down on top of us. By the grace of God, I was able to flip that uh, clipboard up and save my face. And so... And when I came to, I saw Bobby, he was cut up pretty bad, uh, but he was alive, and I was alive. I took a breath in. Take a deep breath in right now. Go, and then release. There is something so precious about that. And I learned it that, that, the, at that moment. And then I moved my left arm. I couldn't feel it, but I, I knew I was alive. And so... We got up, we went to the center of the courtyard uh, of the Pentagon, and then, then we um, were being hollered at, saying, go here, go there. And then somebody yelled right to me, you've been hit, you've been hit. Uh, I'm not in the military. I was a contractor there. I had no idea what it meant. I looked down, and I realized I was covered in blood and soot. And, so, and that's when the pain just started to head, hit in. And so after that point, uh, Bobby and I had gotten separated, but we ended up reconnecting back in the triage area. We talked earlier about the value of time. We talked about be worth. When I was laying there, I was seeing people running up saying, where do I donate blood? Where do I donate blood? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to learn from a terrorist attack. You, you don't need to survive one to learn from one. You can donate blood today. You can reach out and make this world a better place just from this experience that I'm sharing with you now, because you can make an immediate impact. And so show that worth, show that value so that others can see it. And we can create this value of a better tomorrow. So when Bobby and I were laying there, um, I heard his voice and he said, I could hear him talking to a doctor. And then a paramedic came running over and said, get out of there, there's a second plane incoming. That's the one that crashed in Pennsylvania, but we didn't know. I looked up and I could see the, the uh, F-16s flying over us like a hornet's nest. I'm like, oh, this day has got to slow down on at some point. I mean, come on. And so we got up and we ran underneath the nearby bridge and we huddled. And there, there, I just, I was just 
wanted everything to slow down. Have you ever had one of those days where you just wanted to stop, time out, and say, all right, everything calm down, everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I was there. And so this woman named Erin Anderson, she was just sitting at home wanting to do something, to help someone. And she drove up with her SUV. This is a tiny little lady. I thought she worked for Avon or something when I first saw her. And she drove this huge SUV. And she drove in and said, and she, she rolled down her window, and Bobby and I were just, we had reconnected in the triage, so we were sitting on the side of the road there bleeding. And said, she said, get in, I'll take you to the hospital. You see, she, there's a little Aaron Anderson in each one of us. The opportunity for us to think about when others need us, we can say that's somebody else's job, or we can actually do something about it. If we want to change the world, if we want to create value in others, we have to be the one that's going to get up and do it. And now's the moment. And so as Erin got in, she said, get in. I'll take you to the hospital. I'm like, thank you. Let's go. Uh, we went off to the Fort Myers Clinic, which was nearby. And Bobby had to get transferred to another hospital because he had a, a shard of glass that, that went into his head. He's okay now physically, but um, I was able to stay there at the Fort Myers Clinic where they, um, they helped me out. Uh, the, the pain was really starting to set in, so they gave me some pretty, well, I can say they're awesome shots now. Um, they helped me feel really good, and I was able to start to comprehend some of the stuff that was going on that day. And so then I called my brother, because you see the cell phones all went dead after the planes hit, because the cell phones didn't, they were all jammed. And so I called my brother from a doctor's phone, and I said, Jim, what happened? I, ha I have no idea. And so he explained about a plane went in, and I said, Jim, grab mom's Rolodex and call everyone and tell them I'm alive. Imagine getting that phone call. Appreciating every moment. Appreciating. 90 minutes. Now I'm going to ask you to write 90 minutes down on your notepad right now. 90 minutes. Can you do that for me? Write 90 minutes down in your notepad. The value of time. Be worth 90 minutes it took for my family to know I was alive. 90 minutes. So sometimes we think 90 minutes, when we watch an awesome movie, it goes by so quick, doesn't it? You're like, credits, really? Where did the movie just happen? Or if you end up going on one of those first dates that don't go so well, you know, being a Red Sox fan and she turns out to be a Yankee fan, it just doesn't go so well. You just, it, it, an hour and a half can be forever. However, if you're waiting to hear if somebody's alive, like my family, you almost can hear the ticks in your watch, can't you? You just wait. All the things that my family thought about for those 90 minutes. I want you to go home tonight and take 90 minutes. It doesn't need to be all 90. Maybe 30 here, 30 there, 30 tomorrow. Take 90 minutes and think of all the things that you want to do in life. And in, and in memory and in honor of the 184 people that died 10 feet from me, do it. Do everything that's on that list. And make sure the most important component on that list is to tell everyone how you feel about them. My mom, if she could just tell me one more time that she loved me. If we could just go on that vacation trip one more time. If we could just go fishing one more time. You have those one more times right now. There's no guarantee of a September 12th for all of us. So take those 90 minutes and do it. I'm going to be closing now with one final story. And I encourage you all to, to uh, do your homework on those 90 minutes. But I, I talked earlier about walking in, in my shoes. <sighs> I thought you might like my shoes here. They're pretty snazzy, aren't they? Little red, white, and blue flip-flops. Pretty awesome, huh? <clears throat> well, after the 10th anniversary of September 11th, I traveled to Wisconsin. I spoke at the University of Plattsville. And it was a group, a very large group there, uh, maybe four or 500 people in the audience. And at the very end of my presentations, I opened it up for questions and answers. And boy, do I get some zingers from the colleges. And so this final one, that I gave. 
the final question that came up was this nice woman that stood up. And she said, Mr. Holdridge, your presentation changed my life. Cool. I was so raw still from this, the 10th anniversary. I had gone down to the Pentagon. I, I got to revisit with a lot of the families. I was still really, really sore and, and raw from that day. And it felt so good to hear that. 